Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us virtually today. As with all things at Holy Cross, we'll begin this presentation on mental health and stress with a prayer. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Hi everyone, I'm Terry Hoey. I'm one of the youth workers here at Holy Cross, and I'm going to be a part of the presentation today talking about stress and health management. Hi everyone, just want to do a quick introduction. Um, I'm Amy Cancy, I'm one of the youth workers here, and going to be doing a little bit of a stress presentation for you today. Hi again everyone, Mr. Kotman here, the chaplain at Holy Cross. So I hope to offer a faith perspective on mental health today. What is stress? Stress is a normal, everyday occurrence. It's our body's response to feeling afraid, threatened, overworked, overstimulated, or excited. While we often think of stress as primarily as a feeling, it has a powerful physical component. Chemical reactions such as adrenaline pumping through our body to sharpen the senses, focus attention, quicken our breathing, and increase our heart rate tensor muscles getting ready to maybe fight or run away from something. This is the fight and flight response. And while it can save our life in an emergency, frequent or unrelieved stress is not healthy. However, a certain amount of stress is a good thing. It helps us feel alert, energized, and interested in life. It can give you the extra energy to meet deadlines or the intensity to give you your best performance in a play like me talking to you today. Welcome to stress. Welcome home. Finally, time to relax after another stressful day at the office. Unfortunately, it's not over. Stress can have an intense and sometimes dangerous effect on your body. It all starts in a part of your brain called the amygdala. When your boss yells at you or you start freaking out about a deadline, it sends a warning message to your hypothalamus which starts mobilizing the nervous system. Your heart rate jumps, your intestines go a little haywire, and glands start pumping out that dreaded stress hormone, cortisol. A stressful day here and there isn't a huge deal, but if you're one of those people who spends most of their life as a stress ball, all this biology can spell trouble. In the heart, blood vessels constrict which makes pumping blood a difficult job. That sends your blood pressure up much higher than it should be. Things aren't so great in your digestive system either. Those butterflies in your stomach? That's actually your body limiting gastrointestinal activity. That means less food broken down, bloating, and a lack of nutrient absorption. All while hormonal changes are happening that can raise your cholesterol levels over time. Stress can also make you gain weight. That cortisol flooding through you ramps up your appetite and makes you want to eat a lot. And that nasty cortisol isn't done. It can also cause changes in the brain that may hurt your sleep cycle and your memory. And on top of all that, chronic stress puts people at higher risk for depression, anxiety, and heart disease. So next time you're stressed, take a deep breath and consider a few other ways to deal with it. Exercise, eat healthy food, Get the rest you need, and above all else, stay positive, man. In understanding stress, it's really important for us to get a real good grasp on everything that we can about stress, but also anxiety. Stress is a reaction to things that are very external, and anxiety are things that are a response and reaction to things that become internal. And there are related cousins, but they are different. So it's important for us to recognize that although stress happens to everyone, anxiety and different levels of it and different levels of stress are as individual as each person watching this. So what do kids get stressed about? I know in my office as a youth worker, it's again as individual as the kid that comes to the office. Things like exams, uh, voting for a pizza, uh, relationships, especially romantic relationships, friendships, there's different things, uh, family issues, pandemics, uh, 
like we're currently in. All these different things are, are stressors that cause us to react in a manner that can, can really cause us to maybe lose some sleep or feel overwhelmed or uh, be irritable or you know stress when you're in it and it's okay to accept it. Acknowledging it is what it is, is key. So in understanding stress a little bit more, I want to talk to you about good stress versus bad stress. There is such a thing, good stress, who knew? But good stress makes you study for tests or exams, gives you the adrenaline you need to try out for a team, gives you some courage to ask that person out on a date, or the courage to pick up the phone to call a pizza or a cab, you never know. There is stress that is positive. It can get good results. When stress becomes negative, that's when you start to really uh, build up some issues, uh, get some energy that's not so great for you, uh, get overwhelmed and start, if left unattended, get some pretty dark thoughts going. Specifically, if stress ever leads you to suicide thoughts, that's a problem. Clearly, when wouldn't it be? We need to take a look at being able to cope, knowing when it's getting to a danger sign. Because bad stress left unattended is a dangerous thing. Hi everyone. So we've talked a lot about stress and what it is and what's going on in the body. Um, just kind of want to highlight a few coping strategies things that you can do to help look after stress, look after your health. Um, some of the ideas that I'm going to highlight right now might be uh, sleep. I feel like when we get stressed, we have a hard time sleeping. Keeping a regular sleep pattern, going to bed at the same time, turning off our electronics is really helpful. Um, another great tool that you might want to look at is getting involved, helping out, helping your friends, um, some community agencies, maybe um, doing some food drives, um, serving some food to others, even just helping a friend. Helping you feel productive and wanted can really help your stress levels. Um, another one that we don't think about very often is sometimes bad days are going to happen and some things that we don't have any control over, like pandemics, are going to happen. Sometimes we need to accept that stressful days are gonna happen. Exams, uh, fighting with a friend, sometimes it, it is what it is, and we can't do a lot about it. Breathe, taking some deep breaths, calming yourself and your body and what's going on in your body, and letting it go. We're gonna have a bunch of resources for you at the end of this video clip. 
of different coping strategies and resources. There's no wrong door. Ask for help. There's help within the school. There's help in your community. Ask any trusted adult. They'll get you connected to some help, especially if that stress is getting to be too much and you're not handling it very well. Please ask for some help. Um, there's some great apps that we're going to share with you and other coping strategies. So again, don't be afraid to ask for help. We're here for you. Hey guys, we have a fun little video. You guys probably will recognize it. And in this video, great little music, great music, which is also a great little coping strategy. There's a few other little things going on in the video. I want to see if you can pick out what strategies that the musicians are using to help them deal with stress. So we saw in the video, some gathering together with friends, some music, some uh, coming together, lots of good things in that video. I, like Amy said, be interested to hear what you said. But I also want you to know, it's not uncommon for people to keep their private thoughts and feelings to themselves. I totally understand that, totally respect that. You are the expert on you. So I want you to know that you have help at the end of your own hand. I often think of myself in terms of what can I do to make my life better, my hour that's going by next better. And I think in terms of the senses, I, I think in terms of you know, what, what do I smell that can make things feel better? Nothing like fresh break, baked bread, <laughs> nothing like a, a sense that reminds me of lavender or my family or that kind of thing, a nice cup of tea, uh, you know, so smell, taste, hearing, touch, uh, it's all important. Being able to go near water, being able to have that walk, uh, being able to have a bath, being able to do self-care is really important and, and you know what works for you. So please do those things, but recognize that it's an actual wellness plan because you need to commit to your own evolution and wellness and happiness. You're responsible for it, but reaching out is a very important part of that. But I want you to look to yourself first for what you can do. The, the touch, the taste, the smell, what are those things that you can do in those areas that can help yourself pull yourself up so that you're not looking for a handout, but a hand up. It's important in your wellness and I know that you can do it. There is no wrong door. Friends are wonderful, but sometimes you really need an adult. And we're here. Don't worry about that. So when people are experiencing this type of acute stress, um, it can lead us to ask bigger questions about life. Um, wondering why this why why this type of pain exists or why me why is this happening to me and um, thankfully our, our faith does our, does offer some comfort and some hope and strength in this regard um, one of my favorite books in the bible is the book of job now the book of job is in what's called the wisdom literature of the old testament and it's a story it's not history it's a story with a with a point kind of like a parable and it accounts um the history of a man named Job. Now, now Job was considered a righteous man, and and he lived very well, and he loved God and had a good relationship with God and a, and a very strong faith. And um, I can't get into all the details, but what happens is Job undergoes extreme hardship and suffering, and at first he deals with it um, with a lot of a lot of dignity, and he's very composed. And eventually he kind of he loses his cool understandably he loses his family his livelihood and all this stuff he becomes sick and he says why is this happening now the prevailing kind of theology and understanding of god at the time was if you do something bad you will experience some some type of suffering um so when he's but he's a little confused because he's thinking back to himself you know i thought i lived pretty well i don't know how this came about what did i do to deserve this 
And in fact, his friends come and say the exact same thing. They're saying all this horrible stuff happened. What did you do? Like you must have done something, but he's saying, I can't think of anything. Um, and, and eventually he, uh, like I said, he loses his cool and he lets God have it essentially. He says, why is this happening? I don't want to be here. Why do I have to undergo this? And after about 30 chapters of Job just, you know, sounding off, um, God himself actually comes into the picture. And the whole point that God makes clear to Job is, you, you, your perspective is limited by your human experience and by the, the experience not only of, of humanity, but of your own limited time. So it's, it's, a, it's a difficult truth to, to grasp and to explore. But eventually Job realizes that he can't see the whole picture. And although the story doesn't offer an intellectual answer to the question of evil and why me, like why am I undergoing this? It doesn't explain it. It does offer us the comfort of saying that God knows and God is with us in it. So, and I think one of the most profoundly um, profoundly comforting things about, about the book of Job is the fact that it, it exists and it's part of our faith tradition. Our faith, scripture tells us, yes, this is, this is a difficult part of life. There is going, going to be those why, why me moments. And at the very least, the book of Job shows us that this is acknowledged and that God understands. So just one more quick note on the book of Job. What the book of Job shows us is that our faith and God acknowledges that, that we are going to undergo this experience, all of us at one time or another. And as I mentioned, there's no clear answer. But if we pay close attention to the bigger picture of our faith, we kind of do see an answer. And that is in the life of Jesus himself. Not a particular teaching or any word he says, but in the reality that God himself, you know, the eternal, all-powerful God, became an infant, grew up, became a man, and died, and experienced all the hardship that we do. In other words, God became incarnate, he became human. So he's not some distant, cold being that we have to explain our, our feelings to, hoping that he might understand, but thinking, you're God, how could you understand my struggles? We know that God became human and he can empathize with us because he has experienced everything that we have. So even if we don't have a clear intellectual answer to this, this mystery of why me, we can know and find comfort in the fact that God himself has experienced these things that we do. So we can go to him and know that he understands and he, we can find comfort in that. I would like to share one kind of bonus coping strategy for those times when you're experiencing stress. Um, and that is prayer. It doesn't replace the other practices mentioned, uh, nor the need to seek help from others, but it is always good to be reminded that God is with us. As part of this session, we will be doing a quick Lexio Divina of a short passage from the Gospel of Matthew. Lexio Divina is a meditative reading of scripture, which offers us the opportunity to reflect on the text, to enter into its setting, and enables the text to speak to the experiences of our own lives. Now, before we start, um, I just want to mention one quick thing about the passage I'm going to read. It includes the word yoke. Now, this isn't referring to an egg yoke, but rather uh, a wooden tool that is used by animals in plowing fields. And it kind of refers to carrying a heavy weight. It would go on the animal's shoulders. And uh, just keep that in mind as I'm reading. As we begin, take a moment to find a comfortable and alert position. Settle your body. Let's begin with a few deep breaths, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Continue to breathe deeply, calm your heart and mind. Allow your breathing to return to its regular rhythm. Now slowly turn your attention to God. Acknowledge your hopes for this time in prayer. Share them with God as we pray. I'm going to read a short passage of three verses and invite you now simply to listen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, 
and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Perhaps there was a word or phrase that stood out to you. Hold it in your heart. I'm going to read the passage once more. Try to listen for that word or phrase that calls out to you. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As you have now listened to God, I'd invite you to respond to him. What would you like to say back? Imagine any stress or anxiety in your life, the uncertainty of our times, the daily tasks you have to keep up with, as heavy weights pulling down on your shoulder. Now, imagine Jesus lifting them off, the feeling of lightness as you hand over everything. Take a moment to acknowledge how you feel and thank God for this time together. We will conclude by simply making the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as this presentation comes to a close, just wanting to be sure that you pay attention, close attention, to the resources that are being posted, or where to turn for you to be able to reach out. By no means is this film, this presentation, be all and end all of everything you need to know about that. And in fact, we would most welcome an opportunity to come into your classroom, have a present, more formal presentation or dialogue about stress and wellness more than happy to do that.